called uh, the quantum hall, hall's a guy, quantum hall effect. And there's two currents, this integer quantum hall effect and fractional, it's not inches, a, a fractional quantum hall effect. So there's been a lot of theory, there's, there's now a condensed matter field theory, right? like quantum field theory. So it's, it's like a branch of quantum field theory, which is fairly advanced stuff. You know, that's what at least master's level, master's you know, theoretical physics course at, at university and, and above. So master's and above. So uh, the, the theories there, a lot of theories explaining this phenomenon. And, you know, the guys who invented the theory got Nobels for it. And the experimentalists now, 2005, have actually shown using you know, experimental results that these, these anions exist. And there's, there's many types. So now uh, they're looking at particular candidates to see if they have the appropriate properties. And there's a race on because the, the group that finds the first universally computational anion gets a Nobel because it's just so significant. Because once, once that's discovered, then, then the, the engineers get going. You know, things shift away from research into development, right? R&D. And then uh, they'll, you know, they'll put these anions in little chips. You know, and so they can use all the know-how and experience for many decades on, uh, on silicon, you know, microchips and so forth. Or so you might be onto, onto graphene. And it's not just anions, uh, this whole concept of a topological state, it's not, it's not just anions that have this. But once, once it's topological, it then becomes robust against local noise, a local disturbance. And, that, and that's what makes it so critically important, because then you can have quantum computers that are robust against noise, they're resistant against noise. And then you can scale up. And, and, and a quantum computer is 2 to the power n, you know, exponentially more powerful in what it can compute compared to a, a classical computer. Now, what's the n? It's the number of, yeah, like, uh, imagine, uh, imagine a classic, uh, you know, a, a, a before, imagine a quantum computer before it's topological, it's just, just a, a normal quantum computer. Quantum so, so you can imagine an electron here, 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 here. It's like n of them in a, in a string or, or a, a register, if you want to use computer terms. So you've got this register of electrons, and you're storing one bit of information on, let's say, the spin. So it's spinning this way or spinning that way. So, so binary, binary. So now if these, if these um, qubits, quantum bits, or electrons, were, well, if, if they were anions, then, and you've got n of, n of these anions, then how do you compute? You just take two neighboring ones and you swap them clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, now doing this kind of stuff is called braiding. Like, like, like the Chinese in the Qing, sorry, Qing, 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 Qing Dynasty. Uh, you, you take three strands of hair, like on a woman's long hair, three strands, and you just cross them over, like you're braiding. So quantum computing, to compute, you braid. So conceptually, it's very simple. Right? You, just, you just, just take two, any two neighboring anions, and you just swap them, either clockwise or anticlockwise. And every time you swap them, uh, you change the state of the whole thing in a certain way. Yeah, the, the, math, the mathematics of this has been known since 2002. The anion has been known since 2005. There's a, there's a race on right now to find the appropriate one. And then once that happens, the, the electronics guys get into the development of developing anion type chips. And there's parallel research going on to find other topological ways of manipulating information. So, so we will have quantum computers this century, for sure. Maybe, it, maybe even within five years, five to ten years. I mean, the, the intellectual breakthrough, I, I expect within a year or two or three, you know, the, the, the anion. 
because we've already found them, found one, right? 2005, but it wasn't quite powerful enough. And then our, our artifacts will be TQC machines right? to start with. And you don't you see? Well, once we have the engineering capacity to your uh, to make use of topological um, anions, or to, to build topological quantum computers with anions, how long after that do you see the artifacts becoming so uh. far? Okay, I, th I think you need to make it well. You need to make a distinction between rapid bit processing. I mean, even with nanotech, it's still going to be huge, right? It's still going to be like you know, trillion, trillion times above what what our human uh, brains can do. E even with just ordinary classical computing type reasoning. So once we go to quantum, I mean, instead of going you know, the, the trillion, trillion argument I gave earlier. You now go two to the n, and what happens when n goes large? Right? I mean, how many atoms in this? You know, a trillion, trillion. That could be your n. You know, if you could do it robustly. So then you have two to the trillion, trillion. <laughs> the, the, the capacity is just enormous. So what what could you do with such capacity? Well, uh, the quick answer is you could simulate nature. Now, that is a major plus. Major. I mean, the mind boggles when you start going down that direction of what's possible. Imagine, with today's classical computers, imagine you're a quantum chemist and you're interested in simulating the behavior of molecules using a computer to simulate quantum chemistry, quantum mechanics of molecules. Right? Well, very quickly, as, as a quantum chemist, and you're simulating the behavior using quantum mechanics to simulate how molecules move and behave and attract and bond and all that stuff, very quickly you will notice your classical computer fails. It, it just gives up. It just doesn't have the computational power. Because, and why is that? Because Every time you add one more atom to that molecule, the size of your problem doubles. So technically, your Hilbert space gets bigger, right? It's, it's so uh, if you add n atoms to your molecule, your, the size of your problem, more or less, has gone up by a factor 2 to the n. Right? So the size of your problem explodes exponentially. Exponential explosion. Okay, now along comes robust, uh, strongly scaled TQC, topological quantum computers. Now their power goes up 2 to the n. So the power of the computer is going up at the same rate as the size of the problem. The two match. Right? So you now have a computer that can simulate large n type problems. So you could maybe simulate large molecules. How large? Well, just make more n. Put more n in the 2 to the n. Right? Just put more anions together. So you could have zillions of them, perhaps. And then you could simulate maybe the behavior of a molecule, like DNA. And how far can you go? Could, could you simulate the behavior of a cell? You know, all the components of a cell, would that be possible? You, know, you can speculate, maybe. And, and if you can do that, well, why not a whole organism? You know, zillions of cells. And if you just add more in, well, how about whole populations, you know, whole communities? So in other words, maybe, maybe, you could have artificial life in a TQC. And then that leads on to people speculating, well, maybe... Our universe is a simulation, right? Like uh, um, Nick Bostrom's famous, you know, in the UK, he's famous for suggesting this, that, that, that what we are is just a simulation in some hypercomputer. Maybe. But uh, maybe, maybe that's one of the things that um, these artifacts, if, if they're TQC-based, 
initially. I mean, later they, they might be like foamy tech based, and, you know, or ato tech based, or eventually plank tech based. But uh, one of the one of the things they might do with their their time. I mean, if you, if you ask fundamental questions like, well, what would an art like be like? I mean, what would it look like? What would it do? What would it be thinking? What kind of mind would it have? Well, I think the quick answer to that is we're too stupid to answer. We just don't. don't. I mean, imagine a mouse trying to speculate on, you know, what do, what do human beings think about? Cheese? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't do it. But, you know, just, just maybe one of their activities would be to to speculate on building universes, maybe. What would they so, do so, with the universe? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just play with it. I mean, you've seen the famous ending of, of Men in Men Black. Like two of one, yeah, one, I think one, it was. One, yeah. yeah. You see this... A little bit of a marble, a little alien yeah. Yeah, marble. Yeah, and the marble has a whole galaxy in it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, who knows? So, so there's, I, I see a definite tie-in between uh, cosmism and deism, not theism. The theism, I think, is ridiculous. I, I think the universe is just utterly indifferent to us. Right? I mean, you know, shit happens, you know, accidents happen. You know, just the laws of physics just kill people indiscriminately, randomly. You know, some freak accident, someone gets squashed by a falling tree on their car. Or, you know, why? Why? <laughs> So, to me, the, the universe is indifferent to us. You know, it seems to me a reasonable assumption. But, uh, you know, with all this anthropic stuff, do you want me to go into that a little bit? An anthropic stuff? Okay, what, 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 what's the anthropic principle? Well, there are various forms of it. The, the weak one is that uh, the laws of physics have to be such that it generates observers like ourselves. Otherwise, we would not be around to observe. If, if the laws of physics were such that no observers could be built, then we would not be here. But we are here. Therefore, the laws of physics must be such that we can exist. Right? That's the weak form of the anthropic principle. Strong form much more interesting, is that the universe has been designed and constructed, built, concocted, so that we get created. Seems like there's a lot of waste out there. Well, yeah, yeah, well, right. So that's almost the theological type argument. And, and um, the anthropic principle has persuaded a lot of former atheistic uh, astrophysicists, you know, physicists, not, not biologists so much, but the physicists particularly, to, to become much more open to deism, you know, the idea of a creator. Is an atheist the lack of belief in an interventionalist God? Yeah, well, well theism is deism plus loving God. Yeah, it's, it's, well, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it depends on you. 